Hi everybody, I'm Kirti Sharma and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Bridgerton, which is a series that is streaming on Netflix. This series is based off of books by Julia Quinn, who center around these eight close-knit siblings and in their quest to find love. So I haven't read any of the books. I actually hadn't even read, uh, heard of this series until Shonda Rhimes started producing it and it came on Netflix. And that's when I decided to watch the series and then I got interested in it. So basically, this series centers around two main characters, or at least this season does. Um, and those characters are Simon, who is the Duke, and Daphne Bridgerton, who is one of the daughters of the Bridgerton family. And these two characters are played by Reggae Jean Page, who plays Simon Bassett, and Phoebe Denever who plays, like I said, Daphne um, Bridgerton, okay? There's a whole host of other um, actors, and I'll put them up so you can see them on screen. Uh, but like I said, these are the two uh, main characters, and everyone else kind of supports their stories, although they do have their own uh, storyline and plot to get through. These are the two characters that, you know, are there from episode one to, you know, the last episode. Um, a little bit about the setting. Like I said, is during, um, you know, the Regency era, and now me, I love historical fiction books and this is an historical fictional romance set in this period so I think it's a really interesting take on the whole thing so if you're really interested in like the those kind of stories I think this is a good series for you to watch so the Regency period is during the reign of a king George the seventh, so the early 1800s, and it also encompasses his two successors. This is the period we're talking about. Um, there is like English literature, English culture, um, you know, the do's and don'ts and customs of that period. Um, that is basically what's on display in the series as well. It basically talks about, you know, some of the main concerns of this period, which is a marriage, especially for the women, you know, they're born and brought up and raised in a way that helps them be married marriageable material. And not just has uh, what they are as a person that is that matters. Also, like their financial backing, as we will see, or as you see in this show, uh, matters as well. They aren't, you know, raised to have an education and they're not raised to have like careers in mind. Their one and only primary job is to be a wife and then a mother and, you know, raise her own family. And then the line will continue, you know, as the story will continue. So I um, watched this show on my own. And so did my sister, and we're gonna get together on Zoom and talk about the series. So enjoy. Hey, what's up? Hi, what's up? Are ready to talk about Bridgerton? Yes. Basically, there's two main characters in this season: Daphne Bridgerton and uh, Simon Bassett, who's the Duke, right? Um, and the whole point of this series is basically for uh, the Bridgertons and I guess other people in society to find love, right? To Find, mar or find a suitor, right? And get married. So that's what all the women are brought up, you know, to do. Because it's set in the Regency period. So I love Regency era, you know, back like in the old school way of bringing up, you know, the kids and like, this is your lane and this is your lane. <laughs> and then how all these women are just like, okay, yeah, I just need to find a guy and I just need to get married. You know, they don't even, a lot of them don't even, uh, consider education or obviously education and career as like viable options because they weren't right. It's the guys in the family that are doing that. And I'm not saying I love it because of that, but I love it because it just gives you like a look into how things were back in the day, you know, from their costumes and their dialogues and just how their customs and, trad and traditions were. So I thought that was nice. And in this show in particular, it follows the Bridgertons and then their friends that are, friends slash enemies slash rivals the frenemies, frenemies yeah the frenemies right the featheringtons and you know the matriarchs in the family are trying to get their daughters married and the queen happens to really like daphne right so the she has the queen's favor and because she has her favor that's going to make her very popular amongst the suitors but as we see she really isn't right um she wants to get married and all that but she just doesn't you know 
she's having trouble. And one of those people that are, is troubling her is her brother who basically rejects everyone and thinks no one is good enough, you know? So she has a conflict with him and they basically, um, Simon comes in and he doesn't want to get married ever. He just wants to, you know, go around having fun and they kind of hatch a plan. Like, uh, you know, you pretend to be interested in me. And because you're the Duke, that means other people get interested in me. And then I'll find what I'm looking for. And obviously you don't have to ever propose and you can go on your way. And then as we find out, <laughs> slowly, slowly they get together. Anyways, that's a little a recap of the show. Did you like it? Yes. yes. Okay. So what did you like about it? I like, well, I like his, historical fiction, right? So I like the setting, yeah. uh, kind of like it being old, old world in the sense, okay, this happened, you know, people, this was their way of life and it actually was a thing. Mm -hmm. so I like the whole setting. Um, I yeah, like just transporting into like an, another world, especially during this pandemic when you're not trans transporting anywhere, right? Yeah. So this is like a I nice break. Just in general, for the whole backdrop of the whole series, they did a really good job making it look like it was that time and the costumes and stuff. So that was cool to watch. I, mean, I thought about thinking about being a woman during that time and a yeah. man freaking corset and those hoop skirts. Yeah, can you imagine having to wear that? Like yeah. we think langas and saris are hard. <laughs> yeah, but just, that was that was cool just to see like it being as authentic as they could make it. Um, obviously, back in the day, that was the way of life, right? As and they were totally dressed up at all times. All times, it's like kind of like how the even though they're not really they in their sari, it's like they wake up in their little whatever, and then they put their whole thing on. Yeah. And, and it's like, they're not even leaving the house really. They're just, yeah. their one purpose is when you hit the season or the wedding season or whatever it is, you know, you yeah, have that one part was interesting. Cause obviously it was re I mean, it's real in the sense that it used to happen. And in some yeah. places, even some cultures now, it's probably still a thing that, you know, it's a big thing to get someone, a girl married and get her off your list, I guess. But that part was interesting to watch as a 21st century girl, obviously. Yeah. Right. Um, and seeing that Our marriage is the end all and be all. Yeah, and the whole for Daphne, life. she was like, this is all I need to do. And this is what I want to be. And I can't remember the other sister's name. The one who was like, I want to work and I want to go to Hold college. On. I have her name somewhere. Let me see. Name. Eloise. Eloise. Yeah. yeah. So it was cool to see the. They're totally different. Yeah. Their yeah. viewpoints that she's like, this is. And she, the Daphne was like, if I get a good match, it'll set the rest of my sisters up to have a good match. And that yeah. was her focus. And, and she's not focus. interested. She just wants to write. I think she wants to write yeah. or at least work. You know, she did not want to, be a writer, she to go to college. So she's like, I don't want this life. I don't want to have the life of yeah. trophy wife, basically. I'm going to be married. All my job is just to have children. Yeah. So exactly. that was. But one of my favorite things in this uh, series was, okay, first of all, it's very bingeable. Like yeah. when I started watching, then I had to watch it in one go. I had never heard of the, heard of the series, like in terms of the books, I had never heard of those oh, books. Yeah. And so I had never read a single one. And then as I started watching the show, I was like, oh, damn it. Now I have to read the books because, you know, you always like to compare, or at least I like to compare how the book was to, you know, the series. And the books are very hard to get right now. I finally got a hold of book one. Like it's right here. I'm going to have to borrow forever. that. Forever. It took done. forever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's precious material right now. And I'm waiting for book two. It's going to take a few weeks. And then book three and beyond, I have no idea when I'll ever get them. But yeah, it was easy to watch and easy to you know follow. It's not complicated. Like a lot of shows... And I like them, you know, they're complicated. You have to be all in it. You know, you're trying to find out what's going on and what's going to happen next, right? This series, you just kind of like kick back. I thought it was easy to follow. I wish yeah, I tried to get him to watch complicated. it. I wish I couldn't follow the first episode. I had to like stop. And he's like, what's happening? And I was like explaining. And I was like, okay, just leave it alone. So, but one of the things I really liked was obviously we're talking about the 1800s. So you're not going to see like a diverse, like royal you know, family or even like, um, you know, Dukes and all of that, you know, but in this show, obviously, cause it's Shonda Rhimes show. So she made it like, you know, yeah, like diverse. diverse. So that was interesting. Like at first, when I saw that, it took me aback a little bit. I was like, wait, you know, but then I was like, no, forget it. This is, he is Simon Bassett and this is, you know what it is. So I really love that. And there was a lot of diversity, well, not a lot of diversity, but there was like, there were a couple Indian faces I saw, I thought, you know, yeah. like in some of the parties and stuff, I was like, okay, you know, obviously if we we're talking real world, this wasn't the case. You know, if there was diversity, it was in your work, like, yeah. oh, you know, the health, 
basically. Um, and just to see that they were elevated in the show that makes it more relatable. So that was really cool. I like that. And like we already talked about the costumes were all over the place. The uh, sets were really nice. You know, I want to go to a ball. <laughs> you know, I want to wear nice clothes and get out there. So that was really nice. Um, did you like, okay, so how did you feel about the main character? Did you like her? I found her annoying at times. Yes, I thought she was annoying. I kind of liked her sister's, what's her name, Eloise? Eloise better, right? I like, yeah, yeah. but I feel like it's also because of what she stood for and what she symbol her character symbolizes. Mm -hmm. But Daphne, I felt like some parts she was like almost like like an irritating little kid, like yeah, you know. But, but I think that's also the time that they're living in, because, you know. Like that's all they're, you're brought up. Her, to that's, do. What, that's all she knows yeah. to be bred to do. So that's so all. She, yeah, and so if you feel like it's not going to happen, it's more and more pressure on you because you know, like back then, the, like the older you get, and and not even old, we're talking like upper teens and lower twenties, and that's considered like old if you don't get settled, you know. So yeah, it's like a ticking time bomb and you have to get things figured out before. I think a part of watching the series almost makes you think about some of like Indian culture and some of what Yeah. Exactly. Come up in our culture and our heritage and yeah. we're trying yeah. to change that, but I felt a lot of it mirrors that okay, yeah. it felt more relatable to me when I watched it because I'm like okay, you hear and see this. Yeah. Cuz remember when we went to India like a long time a long time ago, like a when we went, when I think we were like in high school and we went and we were talking about how, you know, um, we go to school and then on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, we got a part-time job to work, you know, wherever we were working. And everyone thought that was insane. Like, we, why are you working? And we're like, that's what you do in America. You go work so you get some experience and you get some money, you know, to do whatever you want with it, you know? And in India, it's like, no, you don't go and work. Like that means that your it's family can't common. afford. Yeah, it's not yeah. common. And that means your family can't afford to, you know, raise yeah. you or they don't have money or you're not from quote unquote right background or whatever, the, whatever the hell that means. Right. And over here, it's so different. And then if you look back at the show, that's basically what it is. You have like, you know, shopkeepers, like one of like the seamstress or the tailor. She was an African-American, I think from France. Right. I said African American, but that's not obviously the case. She was a black lady from France, I think. I don't think she's actually from France. She just fakes the accent. Oh, okay, 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 okay. There was a scene where she was speaking like British English, and oh. So oh, I, feel, I feel like I don't think she's French. I okay. think she's well, French. my point was that she was out there working and, you know, and p women from these um, like households who are, you know, they're going to her to get the clothing, but they're looking down at her too. Like they need her. So they butter her up for the, you know, for the dresses. But then it's also like, oh, but look, we are from this household. Our daughters are trying to get married here. Our daughters aren't in stores, you know, mm -hmm. uh, waiting on other women. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was cool to see that. Obviously, that shows you just how different, um, you know, the thing is from here and there. Okay. So we talked about Daphne. I thought she was a little bit annoying myself. I was like, so what about her is so, uh, like, favorable? You know, like, you know? Yeah. But it's like, whatever. That's the main character. That's But fine. I also thought it was somewhat not comical but it just made me laugh for a second when she got favored by the queen and then she was kind of like oh i'm just so awesome. it and then that uh the newsletter thing that the lady feathering down that they, they do whistle down whistle, whistle down. down when her, the letter thing came out or the whatever it's parchment or whatever it is and then they kind of were like reality check you're not all that great you don't you know yeah. there's no suitors coming for you and yeah, stuff and exactly. that was funny because at first it almost got to her head where she's like oh what does whistle down say about me? So I thought yeah, that was. Oh, but that's the thing, right? Like, even though your house is like burning or underwater, you know, you're worried about the other house, you know, like what's happening there. Like stuff is really bad here, but as long as your house is worse off, then that's all I care about. You know, my daughter is having a hard time getting married. Okay. But so is your daughter. So it's okay. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like that, like the gossip of the day. I thought the whole whistle down character was cool, you know, yeah. and I was interested to find out, you know, who is it? Like who was spreading this stuff? And for a lo long time, I thought it was Eloise. You know, she was pretending to look too. for. Yeah, she was pretending, or I thought she was pretending to find you know, find out who did it. 
And I don't know, should we give it away who it is? I think we should. I mean, might as well. It's another, I mean, it's in the first season. If you watch it. They yeah, exactly. So anyways, I thought, you know, it was her. And then I was like, wait, is it the brother? Because, you know, her, one of the brothers, uh, what's his name? Let me see if I can find his name. Was it Anthony Bridgerton? He was the artist. Yeah. So was it him she was talking to or Colin Bridgerton who liked um, the Featherington's cousin? No, it was oh, the other Colin. brother. It's yeah. Colin. Oh, it was Colin. Yeah. So I was like, oh, maybe it's him because he's always talking to her about this gossip. And then he knows the Featheringtons, like he's in their circle as well, you know? So, but it ended up being one of the Featheringtons instead. It was Penelope. I was actually shocked when I saw her in the carriage. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who I thought it was going to be, but yeah. I definitely did not think it was her. Yeah. So I thought that was a cool plot twist when yeah. they did you like her did you like her character? I did I liked her Penelope yeah I did too I thought it was it was like the classic character where she's in love or she's pining after a guy mm-hmm. and you know because she's not like the slimmest there at this time and she's not the prettiest so she's like the friend you know that you can go and talk to and have fun with but obviously I'm not marrying you I can do yeah. better you know and yeah. that was sad but it was just like you know that cliche character but I liked it. I mean, obviously she was like sad and upset about it, but she, I think, you know, she was, she was fun basically. And she also, yes, she wanted to get married, but she also seemed like her life was a little bit more, I think maybe because she was concerned about her cousin as well. And that's the part that I like that she actually was. Her gen- cousin was Marina Thompson. That, that she was character. generally concerned about her and was like trying to help her find her soldier boyfriend who was the father of the child or whatever yeah. he was actually genuinely concerned yeah instead of it being like gossip and like oh you know frowning upon but it isn't it crazy how like your morals get twisted obviously for her her character morally she wasn't okay because she was already pregnant or whatever you know which is a big no in you know this society at this time and then she's already done one wrong so then it's like okay let's just do another and let's you know ensnare colin because you know he's good looking he's wealthy he has good standing so let me just get married to him and then we'll just you know this is your kid by the way you know yeah. i felt like wow that's so messed up you yeah. know, and it was nice to see how Penelope was trying to help him out, but he wouldn't understand. Like he the wouldn't. The part was Pen- uh, Penelope's mom was like, "Okay, yeah, that, that's a good plan. You get it done quick, otherwise, yeah. eventually people are going to be able to tell." Yeah, because it's going to affect my daughters. You yeah. know, because it's like we have you living in our household, and you're putting our household to shame. Which is obviously, once your household is shamed, then you know, it is what it is. You're done and dusted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about um, Simon, the Duke? I liked him. Yeah. I liked him. I think. I liked him more than Daphne's character. Yeah. I liked him more than Daphne's character. I think he plays the role of a Duke well. Like when you look at him, how he's he really looks. good looking. Yeah. With the way that they <laughs> dressed him in the guy. show. Like he looked, yeah, he looked like a Duke. I was like, yeah. okay. I kind of liked his swag that he had. Like initially when he was trying to be like, you know, girls are swooning to him and he's just kind of like, okay, whatever, whatever. He wasn't yeah, and, and, and then you understand why he doesn't want to get married. Yeah. He doesn't want the kids. Backstory on his that. backstory. I mean, that's a crazy, sad situation, backstory, you know, yeah. to have like a father who treats you like that and punishes you and just doesn't care about you and sends you off because you're like dumb or you can't talk right. You know, yeah. that was pretty insane. Yeah, so we understand like, you know, where he's coming from. And I get, I like that. I like the flashbacks to it. You know, but I found like the switch that happened, like magically he's married and magically at the end, they're going to have to. Okay. And before we get to that, like something crazy happened in the show, which I have strong opinions about, but I mean, I thought the transition happened too quickly, but then that's the thing where you're condensing a one book into one series or one season, you know? So that was the thing. Okay. So now, you know what I'm talking about, right? That scene. Which one? Where, where? where she finds out why or what needs to happen exactly yeah. for her to get pregnant. Yeah. And then he's like intoxicated or he's like drunk basically. And then, you know, they're intimate and then he realizes what's happening and he tries to stop her, you know, but she's on this mission. She has to get pregnant. She needs to be a mom, you know, and she kind of, so I thought it was like rape basically her character was raping him because he's basically leading up to that point he had already told her like a million times i don't want to be a father i don't want to have kids you know he didn't tell her why but you know um basically it was out there that he didn't want this and then even during um you know during 
like that whole scene you see that you see the recognition in his eyes like wait what's going on i don't want this and then even when he sees that she's not letting off you can see it in his face like he feels betrayed so i thought it was like rape she was forcing herself on him right did you see it the same way yeah i mean i that part i thought was all that whole build up the whole thing made me so uncomfortable because if the roles were reversed and he forced himself on her you know, and some people can be like, oh, they're married. How do you force yourself onto someone? It's like, well, no, you, you still have that. consent, have right? Consent, even and even. especially if the roles were reversed and he had forced himself on her like that, I think there would have been a crazy uproar, right? The part that I didn't like with that whole, before that scene even happened was when she started being like, he betrayed her. Yeah. About the not having a kid thing. Yeah. I didn't agree with that logic no, so apparently i guess you know they don't talk about you well, know no, the whole know. process so i thought she i guess he she meant that he couldn't have kids i don't know that whole thing was so no, i think yeah i think they played the whole misunderstanding piece of okay yeah. proper girls don't know how what, how we're children, no, children that's fine problems. but i think he kept telling her no i don't want kids and she took it as I like can't have, you yeah. can't have kids but so and her she, whole goal is to have kids. Like we just got married. Now I need to be pregnant right now and have a kid. Cause that's what my life is. About. That fine. After that scene that you were talking about happens. And then they kind of have See, a, like, it ties up in a bow and nice and clean. Like she never, uh, is never confronted of the, about, about the fact that she forced herself on him. Like she raped him. Right. Yeah. All of a sudden, like she does that and they're not talking to each other. Like I understand why he's not talking to her, but what's her problem? She because got her. She, the, but that's the thing, and that's part I don't agree with. She and no, like and then he, that's he one of the reasons her. I didn't like the character because did, like I did not no remorse. Yeah. Like, did, did she show any remorse? Like, I'm sorry this happened. I'm sorry I did this. Like, she didn't even try to understand what was going on. Like, he was the one betrayed, right? Like, it was crazy. And then, and and then you see in like, the next like uh, episode or two, they're talking again, and they're like. Uh, all happy and loving each other again but they never resolved basically what happened like she learns what happened with his mom what happened with his dad right but did she ever say sorry yeah I was <laughs> don't you think she should have said sorry like okay you want to be a mom yes that's a very important thing and everyone should talk about that before they get married especially you know like if you want they kids, you don't want kids. They and he them. did and he said it a hundred times yeah, that I don't want it so, okay say you really want it and he doesn't want it maybe talk about it some more maybe let some time pass you literally just got married you know so that was my biggest gripe with it like first that scene that's basically a rape scene yeah. And it wasn't treated like that at all. At least in her eyes, she still never saw that she did anything wrong. And that like irked me to no end. So that's one of the big reasons I wanted to read the books. So I was like, this uh, scene like made me so mad. And then what happened afterwards made me so mad. I was like, maybe this is a creative license they took on the show. And maybe it's explained like in the book some more mm-hmm. because, yeah. you know, the books are more thorough and you can't put every line and every conversation in a show. But then I was like, don't you think this would have been like a big conversation to put in or a big scene to put in? And then my thinking is if the book is exactly like that, then maybe the show should have went ahead and put it in there. Taking creative liberties, it's a show. You can add your own screenplay into it, right? So I just thought that if the roles were reversed, there would have been a crazy uproar. Why there isn't an uproar about that now, I have no idea. Yeah. You know, it was just crazy. Because I was like, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Maybe I'm being extra sensitive right now. But this is a bad thing that one of the main, or the main character did. Yeah. Why is it not treated like a big deal? Yeah. It was just like, oh, this happened to them. And now let's go on. And she used that, that, that whole thing happened. And then she used that to be pissed off at him. And I'm like, yeah. I was just, I, I remember watching and I'm like, I don't understand your, like the girl's <laughs> logic. I can understand his logic to be like, what the hell did you just do? Yeah. Yeah. And whatever. But I was like, and she went on this whole tirade on him and oh my God, you betrayed me and you didn't tell me and I didn't know. And yeah, yeah, that was just, Maybe that's why I don't like her, really. Yeah, I, I think I don't care. Yeah, I mean, she was a little I'm, annoying and a little entitled looking in the beginning. Like, I'm the best and I'm most popular and I'm going to get a sweeter. Like, okay, that's fine. Like, that's not a big deal, I guess, in the long run because this happened. Yeah. And so you would think that something like this happened, then there's a learning curve. 
you know, you learn and you grow. And like I said, maybe the season didn't have that many episodes going on, but they could have taken the other stuff out and put this in. Yeah. Cause it's a big thing. Like I was like, I'm kind of blown with this whole thing. Like what happened? Like, this is not okay. Yeah. And I feel like we're like spending a lot of time on this little thing, but I think that was like the biggest thing that happened in the season. Uh, yeah. That was the turning, like the turning point of the whole story and changing. And then at the end, they have a kid already. I'm like, okay, so I guess they needed to bow tie this little uh, story about um, Simon Bassett and uh, Daphne Bridgerton, because apparently each book is another story. I mean, they have these characters, but now uh, the second book is not obviously on um, him and her. And it's on like um, her brother, the Viscount. So it's going to be on him finding, you know, love because his story is very complicated too. He yeah. doesn't, he's not in a relationship with a suitable girl. You know, she's an, an opera singer, you know, and that's looked down upon. Like we said earlier, you know, you can have relationships with these women, but you can't bring them home yeah. to your mom, you know? Mm -hmm. So that whole story is going to be like interesting to see and all that. But would you recommend this show? I do. I like it. I think it's, it might be more obviously like a, a girl thing, kind of a show, <laughs> but yeah. I liked it. I think, to I me, think guys can enjoy it too. But I mean, stereotypically, yeah. it's a stereotypical notion that girls like romance. It's like a, yeah, it's a more female oriented show, I think. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think in today's like time where you need an escape, this means escape for anybody. Like, you know, it doesn't require uh, much thought. And especially if you're into like historical fiction, historical you're fiction. into like the Regency era, you're into all of that. I think it's, you know, it can be good. You know, they have strong male and female characters, even though there's way more women, you know, in the show. But there are some strong male characters like the Viscount, like her brother is an interesting character. Obviously, the Duke, the, he was in the forefront. That was an interesting character. Then you have the Featherington's dad who basically yeah. gambled away all the money, Gambler. you know. So he was there. And then you have um, the Simon's friend who was a, a boxer, boxer, a wrestler, boxer, boxer, you know, and he's trying to make ends meet for his family, you know, but how long can he keep that going? You know, because it can be a devastating, you know, job, sport, whatever. So I think there's some interesting characters. Like, like I said, Penelope was really cool. She ended up being this uh, whistle down. Um, Eloise was fun to watch. You know, she wasn't a stereotype. Both of those girls weren't stereotypical. Yeah. Or the era, you yeah. know? So I thought that was really nice. I thought the Featherington mom was fun. <laughs> yeah. She was really fun. Yeah. yeah was, so this show actually got nominated for um, I, even acting. I think, you know, there's some. I mean, it's a good show. show. It's put. I, I didn't think it was going to get nominated for acting. I thought costume, I thought set design, you know, stuff like that, maybe dialogue or screenplay or something. I didn't think the acting, I'm not saying they were bad. I'm just saying I didn't think it was like, wow, what a performance kind of a thing. You know what I mean? But yeah, anyway. not, none of the actors like stood out like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But so I was like, like wow. It was a well put together show where yeah. between the costume, set design, and the acting, it's all. Yeah put together as a one. Yeah, and it was like fun to watch. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. And I could sit there and watch it again, like I said. I definitely binged it in two days. And they're like hour long episodes or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Remember I started one evening and yeah. I was like, oh, I watched like four episodes and the next morning I got up and watched the other four. Yeah, like, it's fun to watch. It's easy to watch. I, I don't know if it's relatable. Maybe like some of the things we're used to are accustomed yeah. to because of our Indian background and how like orthodox or traditional it can be. But even that has changed a lot. So that's not really the case. But because we've seen the old school shows and movies, you know, that part was relatable. But like I said, my interest was because of the historical fiction and the romance aspect of it. And yeah, then I, I clicked on it on Netflix when I was looking on a browser over like the holidays. And it was, I watched, clicked it was trending because, like crazy because of the whole, um, historical fiction aspect of like what they were yeah. wearing. I had no idea what the show was about. Yeah, like I had never heard I it, like I said. The preview, yeah. I wasn't really paying attention to what they were saying. I was the, like, the, actually, the show it. popped up across my screen a couple of times and I didn't click it. I was like, okay, whatever. Like, Yeah, you know, that happened to me too. And then I don't know what I, I don't know what I was watching. And then I was like, okay, let me just click it. And then I started watching it and then it kind of hooked me. And then I, 
like I, I, was said, by the I still wasn't I actually I think I was debating I was like okay I knew I was gonna get the books but I was still like okay whatever maybe I'll just be these will be one of the shows that I don't get the book you know I'll just watch the show and then that scene mm-hmm. happened I was like no now I need to find out if it's written in the story like that or there's something else going on if it's in the book like that too I'm gonna be pissed off <laughs> because that is not okay in my opinion yeah yeah. So anyways, guys, that was our take. <laughs> right. Season one. Anything else? But yeah. I'm really excited for season two. Just yeah. to see, you know, um, other characters come in the forefront and then what happens with these characters. Like yeah, I said, I didn't one- realize that a, there were books. So now I'm probably going to look into that, even though I might steal yours, but I might get my own. My book is okay. going to be locked up because like I said, it took forever to get my hands on this. And I, didn't- I don't read books on Kindle. So I have to have a book in my hand. I don't have a Kindle, so I have to. <laughs> no, or a Nook or whatever. You but know. the other thing was I didn't realize that, because I was curious like, what the hell they're going to do the next season because it kind of ended that one. Yeah. I didn't realize that they were going to be. I didn't either. So then when I was, then when I uh, searched it, yeah, I searched it, Bridgerton, and there was like book one, book two, book three. And then I looked at the title because the first one was The Duke and I, and mm-hmm. the second one was the Viscount, something, something, something. And I was like, wait, there's a, if the title has his title in it, then obviously it's not about the Duke anymore, you know, but it's about the family. So we'll that see. That makes it more else. exciting. Cause I was like, I was going to watch the second season, but I was kind of like, okay, what are they going to do to the story more than what they've already done to this one? Yeah. So then that's cool to know yeah. that it'll be. So I'm first. hoping I at least get through <laughs> book one and book two before the second season comes out. I probably will because it's wow. not going to take that long for the book to come. It's saying it's a couple weeks out. Book three, I can't find anywhere. It's like, oh, maybe it'll be in stock in March or April. So I'm like, okay, I'm not ordering anything right now then. But um, hopefully I get those, uh, get through those two. And then we'll go on from there. Okay, sounds good. So thanks for doing this with me. You're welcome. (laughs) See you next time. Bye. So that was our talk on Bridgerton. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I love historical fiction and I love historical fiction romances. So um, the series is really interesting to me. I can't wait until the next season comes out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed our little take on Bridgerton. Let me know what you think and like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.